Hey guys, how you doing? It's Nate from The Style Dog, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my piercings. Piercings that I currently have right now, and piercings that I have had in the past. So I'm going to kind of give you like a pain scale rating, as well as kind of talk about the aftercare, and just my uh, overall experience with having these particular piercings. So, if you're interested in getting some piercings done, and you're not too sure about, um, you know, the healing process, or the pain, or you're worried about the pain, this is definitely the video for you to watch. So the first piercing I'm going to talk about are my ears. I got my ears pierced when I was about 16 years old, and I basically just had, you know, your standard um, studs in for a long, long time. But if you'd watch my videos, you'll know that just over a year ago, I actually started stretching my ears and currently I am at zero gauge. So I am thinking I'm going to stay at this size um, for a while now. Um, I have heard that this is the kind of the biggest size you can go before you know, there's no return. So if I did want to take them out eventually, I could still take them out and the hole would potentially close. I'm not sure how true that is, but I'm a little bit fearful that a little bit later on I might not want um, holes in my ears just because of my work. And so I've kind of just left them here and it's not a bad size, but um, I sometimes think, you know, or oh, maybe I should go bigger. But anyway, so I'm at zero gauge now. So I've always really liked the look of stretched ears, but I didn't really want to do it. I don't know, I was a bit worried about it, um, the pain and, you know, just the whole process of it all. So I kind of put it off for a long time. And it wasn't until my girlfriend, Kat, bought me these fake plugs. Um, that I wore for like a couple of days and then I was like, you know what, I, I don't want to kind of have these fake plugs, I actually want to do it legit. So I actually started stretching them. To be honest guys, it wasn't too bad. So I didn't actually use tapers like most people do and they do it themselves. I actually got the uh, piercer to do it. I've made a full video about this and I've actually copped a fair few comments about how I did it wrong, how I should have waited, how I should have used tapers and whatnot. But at the end of the day guys, it worked for me. So I was able to stretch my ears from a normal piercing size to a zero gauge in a very um, small amount of time, in my opinion. Okay guys, so let's talk about the pain rating. Out of 10, I'm gonna give this one a five. It's not really that painful. It's more just like when you stretch the ear, three to four days later, your ears are a little bit aggravated and annoyed, and they do become a little bit swollen, but after that, they do subside and you're good to go. So. What you're going to do for aftercare is you're going to use a product by the name of or it's saline solution, um, any kind of one. You can grab this at any chemist, so this is what it looks like. And this is actually for contact lenses, but it's actually a good um, solution to clean your ears or any kind of piercing. So this is what I use for pretty much all my piercings. So with the saline solution, I just use, you know, these Q-tips and I would actually clean around the area. Okay, so the next piercing I'm going to talk about is my tongue. I've had my tongue pierced for about eight years now and it is my favorite piercing that I have simply because, you know, it's kind of hidden away. Not many people know about it and it's just always been one of those uh, piercings that's fascinated me. Kind of one of the reasons why I got it. I remember um, a friend of mine had one and I was, I don't know, for some reason just having a barbell through your tongue is just, I don't know, kind of freaked me out but at the same time really intrigued me. So um, I got this one kind of, um, you know, at a whim, like I was, I had a half a day off at work and I called up the, the piercing shop got it done an hour later, and then I actually had to go to work. And guys, what I will tell you is, you have to be prepared for the swelling that happens afterwards. So literally, your tongue will swell up and it will affect your speech. Um, I found out the hard way after going to work and kind of start to talk a little bit, you know, and um, it was a little bit painful. It does swell up and you will find that you will have to um, eat kind of soft foods like you know baby food and you would have to have like liquids as well like you know Gatorade and I had um, sus uh, sustagen I had sustagen which is kind of like um, wheat bix that have been like blended up with milk and banana and it's supposed to be like you know liquid breakfast basically so I survived on them for about three days and it wasn't too bad okay so for the pain scale I'm gonna give this one again five out of ten it actually didn't really hurt that much 
to be honest, to get it pierced. It was more about the anticipation of getting it done. I think it freaks a lot of people out when it comes to piercings. Just that build up of going there, sitting down, um, seeing him getting all the utensils ready to, you know, stub your tongue. And I think that's what freaks most people out. But of course, a piercing is over like that. And in comparison to a tattoo, you know, it's over in a fraction of a second. So guys, to keep it clean, all I had to do was gargle warm salty water for the next week or so. I did that about three times a day. And because it's in your mouth, it actually is quite well protected and the healing process really isn't too bad. So the next piercing I'm gonna talk about is my nose stud. And to be honest guys, I was a little bit skeptical before getting this uh, piercing because at the time I got it, it wasn't a big thing for guys to have. It was more of a girl piercing. But um, I got it done anyway because I knew that if I didn't like it, I could simply take it out. And you know what guys, I'm glad I did get it done because I have not taken it out since and I still really like the look of it. So in terms of pain scale, I'm gonna give this one a four out of 10. It really wasn't, you know, painful at all. It was obviously over very quickly. It did make my eyes water, but apparently that's quite normal. And then with the healing process, guys, like it was amazing how quickly this piercing healed. I had no dramas at all. All I'm going to say guys is keep the area clean, use your Q-tips with your saline solution and you know keep the gunk off, you know, the, the excess blood or whatever comes out of your body from piercings and you should be fine. Mine healed in about three days and that was it and I had no dramas with it at all. So the next piercing I'm going to talk about, I did have at separate times, they were probably about three years apart I'm gonna say and they were my nipples I actually had them done my right one first and my left and the reason why I have taken them out is because of the healing process it just takes way too long um, I had too many setbacks with um, you know how getting the body to accept the piercing so I've since taken them out but I will tell you a little bit about them so I had my right one done first and it kept getting caught on like my work bag because I had like a, a sling over bag and it used to get caught on my nipple all the time and it kept setting the healing process back so I was like you know what I'm gonna take it out and I, I did like it at the time and then I took it out because like I said it just was impractical then a couple of years later I got my left side um, pierced and again um, even though it wasn't getting caught by my bag, it just kept getting in the way. Like as a guy, you don't realize how much you actually knock your chest or you know, your mates might flick you in the chest without you know, realizing that you have a nipple piercing. And at the same time, this was the most painful piercing. I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10 um, for the nipple piercings. It wasn't the nicest feeling as well as the healing process. I'm gonna say is probably about four months plus. I had mine in for around a year and with so many setbacks and having to do the aftercare it just became a little bit annoying and it really wasn't worth it so with the uh, aftercare what you actually have to do is soak the piercing so what I'd actually use is a shot glass just like this and I would fill it with saline solution so then what I'd do is I would lie down and then cover the nipple with uh, trapping the saline solution to soak it and I had to do that for about five minutes uh, twice a day and you know how annoying that got it just I don't know it just seems so time-consuming I just got rid of them they were just super annoying guys and at the same time now I look back and I really don't like the look of having nipple piercings uh, I don't like the look of them anymore so yeah that was my nipple piercing um, saga okay guys so the last piercing I'm going to talk about is my septum piercing which as you can see I no longer have in but if you'd watched previous videos or you follow me on Instagram you would have seen that I had it in um, for about on and off for about three years I took it out last year when I was traveling because I found it actually a little bit annoying and I'd always play with it which looked like I was picking my nose when really I was just like making adjustments so when I first got it done, I actually had, you know, the, the uh, standard kind of bull nose with the, the two rings on the bottom. But I found that that kind of kept getting lopsided. And for me, that was annoying because I wanted to keep it symmetrical. So I did go for a full ring. But in saying that, when you go for a full ring, you can't hide it. So the good thing about having the open-ended bull nose ring is that you can flip it up and flip it down whenever you want. But at the same time, it sometimes gets crooked and that can be kind of funny if you don't know and you meet someone for the first time and you're talking to them and they're looking at your nose and they can see that it's all lopsided and it just looks 
like shit, basically. So I opted to get the full ring, had that in for a while, but ended up taking it out because one, I'd play with it a lot, and two, you'll often, like, a lot of gunk gets stuck to it, guys. I mean, it is up your nose, so you gotta think, you know, what does your nose produce? Boogies. That's what I'm talking about. Boogies would be getting stuck to it, and that was really annoying as well. So I took it out. But again, like my nose stud, it was a really easy piercing to heal. And I would give that one a 5 out of 10 as well. It wasn't too bad. The healing process was around the same time as the stud, so 3 to 4 days. And the cleaning, as always guys, is I just use saline solution with a Q-tip just to clean any excess gunk formed around the piercing. And just, you know, normal showering keeps it clean. Okay guys, so that's my piercing video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helps some of you out there. Now remember, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. As well guys, as I'm starting to actually use my Twitter account again, so I'm just posting random things um, up there, like just, you know, random thoughts that I have during the day, rants, whatever. I kind of want to use it a little bit more so you guys can get to know a little bit about, a little bit more about me in between videos because I can't film videos every day. But thank you guys again for watching. And to all of my new subscribers, I've actually grown a fair bit in the last month or so. So just a huge thank you to, to all of you guys for subscribing, watching my videos, commenting. It really does help motivate me guys to keep making more content and more videos for you guys. And I'm really appreciating the love. So thank you for that. All right guys, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.